Okay, punters, we're back for another week of Tipster. Uh, what a week it is, Mike. How uh, how do you feel about the racing coming up this weekend? Mate, huge weekend of racing. Pretty excited. Uh, can't wait to get stuck into it. Only done a little bit of form so far, just to come up with a mixed moral, but I'm um, pretty keen to, uh, yeah, check it all out tonight and into tomorrow. Yeah, huge, right? Um, you know, we've got the Saruba Clark, uh, over 1,400 there at Caulfield. The George Main Stakes is headlining... Ramwick, I mean, the fields are just great. Um, and geez, haven't we got a great episode for punters this week? Just got to run through it, uh, Nick. Uh, we're starting off with the stables that are running hot. Now, when punters hear that, they're probably immediately thinking, you know, the, the uh, Waterhouse bot stable, whatever. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the media tipsters, which ones are flying. So we're looking at their recent stats, who to follow, big signals there. Um, talking about stables, Mike, the inside word from who? Adrian Bott. So we Adrian got Bott. on board, had a good chat with him. So that'll be uh, good viewing there. Great. So one-on-one uh, -on -one with Adrian Bott. Uh, interesting too, great insights for punters there and certainly getting an insight into just uh, life at, uh, in a very, very, very busy um, uh, training uh, business there with Gay and, and obviously an icon of the racing industry. And look, we're going to finish off with that uh, with that section that we introduced last week, which is called How Do You Punt? Uh, and this week, we're looking at future markets. They're obviously very topical this time of year. People are sort of looking at runners, having their sort of key runners that they're looking at and um, uh, getting very tempted to lob in. So uh, we're going to run through sort of, uh, look, it's almost a pros and cons, I think, as it's going to probably play out. Of, uh, look, Mick's going to take you through his views and uh, throw a bit in there myself, but then we're going to turn over to you guys. There was some great banner on Twitter this week from our uh, discussion last week. So look, join in guys and girls, put your comments there as always subscribe the buttons down below here on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. You're going to know about the show when it drops, um, get involved, put your comments there. Uh, if you come to the full length video, it's got chapters. You can move along to the one that you want to see first. Other than that, Mick, you ready to go? Let's go. Let's do it. So, of course, Mike, we're coming into the business end of the season. And what a better time to look at uh, all the media outlets who have tipsters. So we call it a stable of tipsters um, and see which of those stables are really, really firing at the moment. So as you know, at the great tip uh, as punters would know, I'd say, and if they don't, they're all here. Every media source you can think of, uh, the tipsters uh, stats are on the site. Uh, and so, look, who better uh, in, in the position to sort of talk about who's firing at the moment? So what we've done is we've looked at the last 30 days cash profit. And while we look at cash profit, so that's an even $100 bet, win bet on each, is because those that are actually uh, tipping more, um, they, they get rewarded. I mean, if you're tipping more, you're likely to have a smaller profit on turnover. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, it's about money in the pocket. So um, that's what we're looking at here, right? So without any further ado, uh, first off the uh, first cab off the rank, Mike, is Sky Racing. And uh, look, there are four tipsters here in particular who are really standing out over the past 30 days using cash profit. At the top of the board there, Mick, who's this bloke? Brad Davidson. Oh, Davo is flying in his man cave down there, um, <laughs> living a dream. A, bit, a few electricity problems he's got on the side there as well. Someone noted, noted the other day, which is pretty funny, but... Oh, look, he's, he's on his way to get the new boat and he's, uh, he's tipping up a storm. So up you go, Dave. Well done, mate. mate I, look at his, uh, I look at his interviews that, that he's obviously shooting from home for Sky um, and he's sort of, uh, you know, shots and tips and stuff. And that, that sort of uh, stone wall behind him, it reminds me, I don't know if you, you might be a bit too young for this, the old Brady butt. So he used to have the stone wall by the fire. What? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, right so anyone who's my age, they'll understand what I'm talking about. Dave probably too young. We, we, we love we love Dave but his his location for filming. It looks like he's filming on the um, on the on the like, the kitchen floor. But up <laughs> you go, Dave, mate. We're more than happy for you, mate. We love your work. Yeah, and getting value too, eleven dollar twenty winners and all that sort of stuff. So not mucking around there. No, uh, Blake's a genius. Wallace. He's doing well. Mick Wallace, they're, they're, his colleagues are calling him the Viscount of Value. And like my blue jeans, 2610, Aslop's Fable, 3370. And he's just pulling them out every day that he tips. So, I, I mean, Mick Wallace, just absolutely, um, his colleagues are in awe. 
put out some tips um, over the last seven days in particular and just shooting them off at double figures. Yeah, there's no surprise there with Nick. I mean, he's been doing that for years. It's not, it's not, it's not, not a, uh, not something new. Um, he's, he's a gun. And with the Wizard of the West, the Vi- what is it, the Viking value, whatever, Viking mate. The, guy, the guy's flying. <laughs> Well, give it, give us a spell. Just keep tipping winners, Mick. I love it. He's a good play too, Mick Wallace. Yeah, um, Mick. Priscilla Looker, China Marston, both ex jockeys, and look no surprise, to, no surprise to see him here. Um, just they just know their territory. Striking at one and three. Uh, yeah. So yeah, what do you th- what do you think, Mike? Well, mate, I spoke with Priscilla what, probably just on about a year ago now, okay. maybe a little bit longer, and. Uh, so she put she puts in the work, right? She, she does a lot of hard yards, and um, I'm sure China's very much the same. So they're, they're well educated in the game of racing. Um, they, they know what it takes for a horse to uh, get the job done. And obviously, you know, being both being ex jockeys, that's a huge leg up, so to speak. Who we got next, mate? Uh, so then next, we're moving on to Racing.com. Outstanding. Two shining there over the last 30 days. Here's that name again. No surprise after he was in the top five for Tipster of the month. Uh, for media, Rick McIntosh. So here he is. Uh, and, and by the way, I was right. There is a statue of him at uh, Waterball, mate. So there we go. Outstanding. Yeah, Look forward to getting down to that and uh, checking out the statue. Better news, it's in a, it's in a hotel, mate. So you can oh, get it, have a few beverages. It becomes more lifelike as you sort of sink a few <laughs> more amber fluids, apparently. Trav Noonan does five Five winners in a row last Saturday um, at Belmont. Obviously, for racing.com, Travis uh, uh, tips. He's their WA tipster. Um, and five in a row he gets. And, and look, uh, just checking out some of these strike rates again. Like Travis on 40 tips is, is he's almost striking at one and two. That's just ridiculous. Um, and then you got Rick striking over one and three. So. Yeah, look, Trav's pretty impressive. I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, I don't know him personally, but I see his work out there. And he, he would be one of the one of the harder working guys doing form. I know the form are all doing their work hard. They're doing a lot of hard work, sorry. But, you know, he's out there getting the um, the, the jockey bookings, the engagements on a Sunday night, providing it to punters on Twitter. Great resort, resource for anyone that's looking to do some more embedding, which we'll touch on a bit later. No, nah, look, good point there, Mick. So just moving on. So, Mike, this uh, this list here, top five, we've we've just put the other media agencies together uh, with uh, with high performers and uh, over the last thirty days, that is, and Chris Nelson. Now, interestingly, uh, Mike, Chris, when I interviewed him, uh, oh, look, a month or two ago now, he said, "Look, don't put the Jonah on me. I won't be back on the show if if you put the Jonah." Well, guess what, Chris? You've got better since we interviewed you, mate. You've got better. I mean, there you, you go, there you go, punters and tipsers, mate. You only go, well, you grow a leg after coming on the show. You grow a leg, absolutely. I mean, have a look at these stats. Another ridiculous set of stats. 91 tips, striking at, uh, you know, 41%, 4 and 10, 2 and 5, however you want to look at it. And if you put 100 bucks on every one of those 91 tips, you're, you're nearly up six grand. Got to be happy with that. Yeah, that's outstanding. Greg Splitter, he's with uh, news.com.au uh, and uh, well, the News Limited um, band and Super Racing in particular, but look, Greg Splitter's everywhere, right across the news network. He's tipping in um, WA, Sydney, Mel. Honestly, I don't think he's probably another silent um, Tony Brazzle, you know, in terms of how much form he does. Not and with color. all that challenge, you can see the 246 tips in 30 days, he's still striking at nearly one and three. Um, that's, about four, that's about 40 less bets than what I have. <laughs> Yeah, and he's still doing damage to the bookie. So good on him. On the five. Who else we got, Mick? Outstanding, mate. Outstanding. So um, running at the podium there, we've got Howard Clement from Winning Post, and then notice, noticeable mention to uh, Craig Morty from the Sydney Morning Herald Sport. And rounding out the top five there, we've got Ben Armstrong from Oz Racing, which is yeah. uh, w, we're talking WA there, mate. Yeah, WA, and they're like they're always popping up. Oz Race, they're always in there as is Winning Post and this. Uh, hey, fair income uh, WA. I might just start. Going to WA, everyone seems everyone finds winners in WA. I, I tell you what, uh, well, you know our uh, Pete McCormack, uh, uh, our mate, the boogie from WA, he tells us why. You know, more sort of stable set of horses, easy to get your head around them, etc. Can't et cetera. get enough bets on though, mate. How boring. <laughs> well, it's about <laughs> discipline, Michael. It's about. Can't discipline. R- I can't rack up my two fifty a month. <laughs> and uh, so, last but certainly not least, uh, look, we we. 
Don't like blowing our own trumpet. No one likes doing that. But look, I had to put it up because, look, more than anything, being fair to the guys appearing on, except for Mick Gannon, but um, uh, look, Cody Lane's one who just joined our stable most recently. And I mean, have a look at these stats. Again, striking at almost 30%, four bucks plus average price. And, um, you know, over four, four grand uh, profit if you follow all these tips. Um, it put a few comments to this week on our How Do You Punt. Mick, really, really seeing a lot of knowledge coming there from Cody. Good operator by the look of it. Yeah, absolutely, mate, without a doubt. He um, knows his stuff. He's chiming into our midweek articles now. So uh, keep an eye out for those, mate. He's doing good work. Mate, I'll let you talk to the next bloke. Uh, good bloke, Rick Morris, but uh, uh, as good a punter. Mate, top low. Can't wait to catch up with a beer with him when we get out of this 350,000 year lockdown. Um, we'll catch up for it. Rick, Rick will be on the, probably the Carlton Drafts and the Melbourne Bitters. I'll just probably stick to my stone and wood and we'll probably have 50 of them and <laughs> sit back and relax. But mate, he's a, he's a great bloke and can tip a winner. And just quietly, tip me a winner at about $31 the other day. And mate, did not load. How good yeah, was that? Was, sounds, like, sounds like you owe him more than a beer. Um, in the case. Look, thing about this is if we showed you the longer term leaderboard, you see Rick's name there as well, as you do a lot of the other tips as we've shown. But he's yeah. Mr. Consistent. That's what I call him, because he's always in the winner's circle. Um, look, I'll, I'll, I'll do the deed on the next bloke. Look, I, I, I think it's fair to say, look, this bloke uh, on the other side of the screen here, uh, look, does a lot of work, puts a great effort in. And look, Mick, again, 164 tips, 30% strike rate. Got to be happy with that, mate. Certainly uh, doing enough to be mentioned there. So uh, oh, it looks nice, like you've got a few followers are pretty happy there, mate. I've been seeing a few... Uh, few tweets here and there and comments. couple loyal fans mate stay stay loyal i've had a had a shock of a day so stick strong oh mate stick you, know the old, you know the old saying uh you know it's a it's a marathon not a sprint so i would have bro broken clocks right twice a day <laughs> i didn't say that you said that <laughs> well there we have it folks if you want to know who's firing at the moment there it is i mean of course there's lots firing over different time frames but we just cherry picked out there the ones that are really standing out. Uh, remember, come to the site, thegreattipoff.com, search, put the name in, uh, and you'll find who you're looking for. So uh, our next uh, guest coming up, we have a uh, Adrian Bot joining us. Now, I'll tell you what, Damo, you're in for a bit of a treat here. Not only do you get the tip for the Derby winner, right? Bit of an insight as well to a couple of runners at Newcastle on Friday and Saturday. Okay, so certainly, Certainly in tune with the old theme of tips to here. I mean, Absolutely. What I, I'm seeing more and more is more trainers are getting involved with being a tipster. I'm sure Body probably doesn't want us to call him a tipster. And, nah. and look, uh, from what I'm hearing, there's more in this than just uh, getting a view on which horses are firing at them or which one. Yeah, so he, may, he, also, he also goes into sort of day in the life of a trainer, uh, getting up around 3 a.m., what it's like working with Gay Waterhouse, um, how lucky he is to be in the position he is. Um, but mate, he takes on a lot of work, does a great job, champion bloke, and we're uh, we're lucky to get uh, just a piece of his time. So definitely worth checking out. Fantastic. Let's have a look. G'day punters. Today we're lucky enough to go one on one with uh, none other than uh, Adrian Bott. Thanks for joining us, mate. Yeah, thanks very much, Michael. Mate, uh, the stable's flying. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, mate, talk to us. Obviously, co-trainer uh, Gay Waterhouse, mate. What a character! How's it working? How's it like working with Gay? Oh, look, she's unbelievable. Like I'm, I'm in such an unfortunate position, you know. Like she's, um, you know, one of the most, I guess, powerful figures in 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 Australian racing. She's had the, you know, the upbringing, you know, behind sort of one of the most successful trainers in in history here, in, in her father T.J. Smith. So um, he established Tullock Lodge, and um, you know, she went on, you know, in parts to sort of nearly better his. Oh, that's outstanding. And you guys have about 250 horses. I think you're saying about 150 odd in work at the moment. Gee, I'll tell you what, you'd be pretty busy with that. How, how do you how do you handle the workload there, mate? Yeah, look, it's good. I guess um again, I, I sort of don't really sort of know any any different here. I guess my first sort of real job with the stable was here at here at Gaze. So that sort of size and volume has just been uh been natural. I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I had sort of 30 and 30 in work, you know. So be bored, um, mate. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. You know, but in, in sort of probably um terms of sort of learning, it's been great. I I guess I've seen sort of over that, you know, I've been training sort of in partnership with Gabe probably five years now, probably was sort of working here 
four gate five years before that. So, but in, within that time, you, you're probably still seeing the volume um, amount of horses like sort of five times, you know, the amount daily that you would anywhere else. So you're sort of learning, observing, you know, seeing so many different sorts of examples of horses. Um, you know, no doubt, yeah, there's a fair bit of workload in, in, involved in that, but that's sort of what I, I enjoy. I feel we're sort of capable of handling those. All right. Those so things. I think last time we spoke, you, you sort of chatted about, you know, placing horses well and we see him down at Queanbeyan and I think um, an old favourite of mine, Sacramento, um, probably <laughs> kicked off, we'll, we'll get to that a bit later, kicked off, it's um, broke its maiden down there, I think, and uh, went on to bigger and better things. And so you've done a great job with that. Is it something the stable is going to continue to, to do more of? Yeah, I love doing that. Um, you know, just sort of obviously trying to place horses where they can actually be con competitive, sometimes sort of taking first starters down the line. It, it's sort of by no means sort of a... Um, you know, an indication of their, what we think of their class, I guess sometimes it is, you know, but, sure. um, you know, like those sort of progressive sort of types of horses, you, you, I want to be able to sort of kick them off on the right foot and sort of um, get them winning, teaching them how to win. They can go there and maybe make a few mistakes and sort of get away with it. Their class will sort of get them through and they'll take a lot of confidence from that. You can sort of build a, build a nice record for them. It's sort of a, a, a nice, you know, stepping stone. You can sort of put them on a, put them on a float, give them the, the, the trip away and, Given that experience and they sort of really come on from that and yeah you can get horses that might be your derby types of horses or your staying sort of types or horses that might need a mile or whatever you know you can kick them off over a thousand meters or 1100 1200 down there and you know know that they're you know they're not going to be uh suited by the distance but you know going down there they can get away with it for their class that's you know? do you have any any of those sort of popping about in the next couple of months on a derby path that are going to head down that we can you know just something for the punters um, took a, a they've got a horse sort of stepping out in in um in in Melbourne the next few weeks. Um, Zoom on, you know he he probably won't show his best until he gets to two thousand. He really is a dower sort of type, but um you know we sort of sent most of our sort of staying sort of types down to to Melbourne at this stage just because again they've got that nice um you know Derby sort of lead up program. Uh, no doubt about that. Hey, give us give us a bit of a uh, run over a, a day in the life of Adrian Bott. Are we talking three AM wake up? What time's the alarm go off? And how many coffees? Yeah, sort of, <laughs> yeah, you know, um it is three AM kickoff, yeah. Um there's usually kicks off straight away with a with a coffee. Um I've been really good at sort of reducing that intake actually, which is <laughs> you know, sort of I needed so I used to have sort of about six a day down to down to three. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, kick off at kick off at three a.m. All the staff are in. Um, you know, from three to four, we're sort of really going through and just doing all the checks on the horses from overnight. They're checking their checking their temperatures. Um, if they sort of ate up all their feed overnight, just checking their joints for any sort of inflammation. You know, swelling, filling, any of that sort of stuff. Anything that we need to that might be sort of a few warning signs um, that they're starting to feel something that we need to alter their work for the morning. Um, you know, everything going. Well, well, we'll push on things we need to sort of just give them a rest for the morning or change their program or change their set lists or whatever we need to do. We'll make those adjustments sort of between three and four in the morning. So for me, that's sort of going around and trying to touch base with all the different um, managers and foremen that we've got in all those different places. You know, we might have, say, six different barns here in Sydney and, you know, the ones down in Melbourne. So we've got to go through and go through all the horses and make sure everything's all, all right. Uh, they all sort of have their pre, everything sort of, all very systematic in the morning, um, but they'll all first lots will go out and have their, their warm up and name to have our first horses on the track at 4 a.m. Um, then I'll be sort of at the at the tower in the middle of Randwick there from from 4 a, 4 a.m. through to about 8:30, and that's just sort of where you know I want to see every single one of those 100 and you know 50 horses uh, visually and go through his work, um, go through do the acceptances and nominations and everything sort of between 9 and 9 and 10 a.m. Um, this is where I sort of last few weeks I've been sort of really good or last few months in, in getting a routine now from 10 to 12 I you know, made sure I'd sort of get away from the office now go to a bit of exercise or something just to sort of really clear my head because I just sort of found myself at time getting a bit stale or sluggish or um, you yeah, know just sort of you know whether it's a bit of starting to feel burnt out or whatever it was, so it was really whatever important stresses. to sort of really have that um, 12, 12 o'clock we're, we're back in um, afternoon stables 12 to 2.30 and uh, so they're getting out, all the horses are getting out again. Um, they're getting their afternoon exercise, whether we're having them on the treadmills, taking them uh, down to the pool um, or, or just sort of out doing a bit of walking. Um, and they go try and assess the horses, look at their condition, um, look at what sort of diet changes we need to make, what sort of work changes we need to make to their programs and 
um, you know, we'll, we'll sort of put all that into into context. And in the afternoon, it, from sort of about three o'clock onwards till about six o'clock, I'm just sort of pretty much um, reworking the you know the work right, list. So uh, head to Newcastle on Friday. I think they got the Gold Cup up there. Um, what do you got up there, mate? Couple, couple going around in that. Yeah, if you're nominated in the cup, um, we'll probably we've got Takamuchi Hushrider nominated. Um, probably just set on the one. Uh, Takamuchi might run on on Saturday in the Kingston Town. I'll probably look to run Hushrider there. He is first up over 2,300 meters. So um, look, that might seem yeah you know, a bit of an ask, but he's had three three solid trials. Um, he's Japanese bred type of horse, and he's sort of probably really not really effective anything under 2,000 meters anyway. So uh, just poured the work into him. Um, so he should be ready to ready to roll first up. Do a bit of a sight and on Tont and just thinking in the Cameron. Yeah, probably leave on Tont again to the Kingston Town on, on Saturdays. Probably just looking for the 2,000 metres that you may find the 1,500 a bit sharp. Uh, just thinking we'll probably run in there. Um, again, another one that's sort of first up over the 1,500 metres, but he's had three pretty solid trials to sort of give him a real good hit out. Um, his latest one was good and um, really seen a good change in his work because he was sort of just a bit going through the motions there for, for the first couple of trials, but he looks really switched on now. So hopefully he'll run a yeah, good, good stuff, mate. And as we head to round week on Saturday, got the George Main Stakes, so Reed Eni and Shout the Bar nominated there. Um, are they both going to go around? Both will. Um, you know, Shout the Bar is still sort of probably working towards her peak fitness and her main goal. You know, I'd love to sort of get her down to a race sort of like the, uh, you yeah, know, the Empire Rose um, down over the carnival. She, she won it last year. So that'll be her main goal. So she may find them, you know, this weight for age level against those open class horses. She may find them a bit tough, but I thought her first up run was very good. Um, Bree Daniel was excellent there last start. He nearly pulled off a good little um, cheeky win there at um, sort of 50 to one last start. He just sort of had a, a real interrupted sort of preparation and, you know, sort of probably look pretty average when you look on 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 paper and sort of you know we, we, we had a bit of a messed up job with him you know he ran first up over 14 on a heavy track which was no good and then dropped him back to 12 out the back and he looked pretty plain was just out sprinted and went to Hawkesbury without the blinkers and sort of couldn't keep up so last up blinkers went back on and gave him a real positive ride and he nearly pulled it off so he switched yeah, right listen off. one to follow for the spring mate if you've got a horse that you that you want to tip us into for the spring and, and, and potentially a target there as well uh, yep. What would it be, mate? Um, just sort of ones that are probably fresh in my mind from from Saturday's racing, I guess. Um, uh, Vangelic, I thought, ran a really good race there on the weekend. Um, she's ready for a result shortly. Um, she ran fourth on Saturday in the Shraco Stakes. Uh, you'll see her again in two weeks' time. Um, and she's probably looking for the 400 metres, which she'll get. So it's going to be a race like the Golden Pendant. Um, and I think she'll run an excellent yeah, race there. Horse called Sacramento, we touched on it earlier. We've got a couple of mutual friends. They had the opportunity to chime in to Sacramento. We won't disclose the price. But it was, what, an eight-start maiden at that stage? Is that, is that right? Yeah, look, I, I guess he was a, you know, a staying sort of type, a, a derby sort of type. And, you know, physically look at him, he was just this big, gangly, sort of awkward sort of horse. And he was actually sort of putting in some really nice runs early in his career when he shouldn't have been, you know. Um I guess sort of the owner would, didn't sort of really want to race geldings and staying tight. So he was getting a bit impatient. He was like, oh, look, you know, happy to sort of, you know, sell this on to a few guys. And, you know, I wanted to get the mates in, <laughs> mates involved in a horse. They said, keep them op eyes open for one. And we, we, I thought we sort of found him a nice one. And, you know, fortunately it didn't work out, but I think he went on a, you know, like a six win <laughs> winning streak from. Oh, mate. Right. Oh, look, if some of them had got involved, they might have put the brakes on him anyway. Yeah, thank you, mate. Look, thank you so much for your time, buddy. It's always a pleasure chatting with you, mate. I appreciate it, Michael. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. All right. So here's uh, our next uh, installation of uh, How Do You Punt? This is where we're, we're putting it out there, putters. Tell us about how you punt. Uh, last week, we had a, 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 a subject pop up and lots of interaction. Uh, this week, we've got an interesting one, very topical at this time of the year. Future and all in betting. Uh, do you or don't you? And if you do, how do you do it? And if you don't, why not? So with that theme in mind, Mr. Michael Gannon, tell us about it. Do you? Well, for, mine, you? Um, for mine, I think futures betting, anything you know outside that sort of two-week period is a complete disaster. So it's not something I'd take up within you know two weeks prior. Look, if, if you're an owner 
trainer or you, you're in the know and you know where your horse is going, like good luck to you, like do your thing, right? But besides that, as far as a punter goes, who are, you know, I don't have the inside word of, of where a horse is, you know, being targeted necessarily. You've obviously got a fair guide. I like to wait as long as I possibly can. But would you say, am I an all in better? Occasionally. And, and is it profitable? My word, it can be. Um, I think that there's there's two sides, you know, two pieces of the puzzle. I think, as I mentioned before, Trav Noonan does a great job. And to be fair, like, I got I probably owe that bloke a couple of cases of beer as well. His stuff comes out on a Sunday uh, via racing.com, uh, Monday morning sometimes, I think. And it basically tells you some of the jockey engagements. So if you can get that sort of information, you know that a J Max is going to be jumping on board. They're not going to be pulling him off. So the horse is probably going to go there. You know, these these top top line jockeys are engaged. The horse is more likely going to go there. The, the, the trainers aren't going to, um, you know, lose lose that jockey, right? So the, the horse is going there. Um, the next thing I would like to look at is checking out the weather conditions. You know, Sydney, for, I don't know about the rest of the country, but dead set in Sydney, like it can just rain out of nowhere these days. So like really checking that forecast on a, on a Sunday night, seeing what's going to happen, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Look, sometimes out of nowhere, the bookies got no idea. They're putting the prices up. And where's a wet track and you're at $51. I think a great, great example was the ice bath. I think it was the... Um, golden eagle one of the golden races um went up like 51 dollars, and you could see that the rain was coming it was going to be on a seven day backup and back to each way look it's lost your nose uh, which is desperately <laughs> unfortunate but still made a made a stack yeah. um and, and that with that rain coming so looking at those weather conditions um super important because you, you know the, there can be an edge there look you don't have to bet in all races right that's the advantage we have as a punter we, we can bet when we feel like betting so it's not a matter of going oh, i need to have a bet in every race just to feel like i can get better odds but if you see an edge there take it um and the other one is that if a, if the weather's not an edge and we're happy with the track as it is i would only generally other than ice bath who is a wet track are right i generally just focus on on pace horses reason being if if you if you're on a back marker and all of a sudden you come in and, and you lose three horses that don't line up and they're on pace, all of a sudden you're on a back marker, a horse that sits last, there's no pace in the race, you're dead set gone. You, you've done your money cold. So, you know, I'd be backing, you know, horses that race in the top four. Now, of course, how do you know? Well, it's pretty obvious when you look at the nominations, if your horse is going to be, you know, in the top four in the run. And if it's not going to be, just wait, just be patient. But you don't have to bet in every race, but if you do find an edge, bet up. Yeah. All right. So this is the bit where we turn over to the punters. Tell us how do you punt futures and all in markets? Do you do you play? Do you not play? And if you play, what's your criteria? Is it just a really good horse that you think's got to knock everyone over and you're so bullish? Or are there other factors that uh, Mike spoke to there with regards to all in markets? So remember, if you're, you're in watching... the know. Just quietly, if you're in the know. Slip into my DMs. <laughs> that is still posted under this YouTube video, Facebook or Twitter, wherever you're watching this. Tell us what you do. I mean, do you do you be a participant? And if you don't, why not? And if you do, why? Yep. And and how do you go about it? Uh, so look, uh, let's get the conversation going and uh, let's have a good spring. All right, that uh, wraps up another edition of Titstar. Uh, Mike, uh, you know what it's uh, at last week? Scratch, cognac. Scratch, gone. Gone. A and would have won as well. There we go. Well, you know, scratch for a reason. So who knows? Anyhow, but yeah, would have won if it was, if it was uh, healthy enough, I suppose. Um, look, anyhow, let's stop babbling, Damo. Get on it, Mick. What have you got for us? Come on, mate. So <laughs> funnily enough, cognac is going around again. Unfortunately, they've got it at 1,600 metres. There is a significant gear change going on there okay. around the $17 mark. So if you listen to this, I'll tell you what, you could do worse things, but it's got old mate a tissue or two or two a tissue chasing after it as well. So anyway, that's <laughs> something on the side. But we head to Royal Randwick, race nine. Number 14, She's Ideal. She's Ideal. Um, gets out to the 2,000 metres. Its ratings have been great in the last two starts. It's going it, to it's gonna peak. Let me run a career peak on Saturday. And good horse, going places, well-weighted, 53 kilos. Thank you very much. Uh, just needs a good ride. It's only $3. You don't have to be a genius to find it. But uh, I think it'll be winning, mate. Do you think it's overs at three, Mick? 
to be honest, I haven't priced up the uh, the market as yet, but I had it clearly rated on top. So if I go back and there's about 45,000 horses in the race, I go back and do it. It won't be too far off the mark, mate. Top of my head, yeah. probably around the 280 mark, but yeah. All right, there we have it. Mixed moral this week is She's Ideal at uh, Ramwick there. Uh, look, another episode done there, Mike. Obviously, very exciting weekend. I mean, uh, you know, this is where we start to really, really get excited. Um, some cracking fields there. I mean, uh, I'd certainly be, uh, it's going to be footy and form guides on Friday, I can tell you. Um, Mate, it's all happening. I tell you what, and for the viewers out there, don't be shy. We're going to have the lay, lay of the uh, Beso's lays on Saturday, lays of Saturday. Uh, we've got the market movers, free best bets coming out. Um, Joshy Reed's chiming in with a uh, preview for the uh, for Ramwick for the Group One and a Group Two race there, and I think Beso is covering some of the uh, the stuff down in Melbourne for us as well. So some feature race articles coming out. Don't miss them. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, give Damo some stick. <laughs> I, and more importantly, win on the punt. Apparently, I've got jaundice, so this uh, this little studio set up in the house uh, is not doing the old complexion too well. Wouldn't what know what John is, mate. You're looking for so good. long. <laughs> but anyhow, you, you, you get on with it. But you're exactly right, Mike. And obviously, to get all that stuff, come to the site, thegreattipoff.com, um, Twitter, uh, Facebook. You're going to see these uh, articles posted everywhere. Uh, some really great content there. And look, always, as always, uh, get involved, uh, put your comments there, um, and uh, look, give us feedback. That's what it's all about. Until next week, Mike. Um, Thanks. Another great one. Get ready for the weekend and we'll see you next week. Thanks, mate. Fun as always. See you, partners.